Today's video is to celebrate National Sewing Machine Day. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by and if you've already subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you and welcome back. I am here today with Jeanette Valenzuela and today we are going to be celebrating National Sewing Machine Day which is June 13th. Jeanette, thank you so much for having thank me. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. So Jeanette is a creative sewing artist and we're going to talk about her, get to know about what she does and the purpose of why she sews. and really just get to know the world of sewing according to Jeanette. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So Jeanette, how long have you been sewing? I've been sewing, I would say since I was about 10, when I was 14, took it to another level and really learned the bones of sewing with all different stitches, all types of different, you know, fabrics and all the different techniques that one needs besides just you know sitting down at the sewing machine and going how did you get started you? was there somebody that influenced you or a class or um, you know my grandmother and my mother both sewed and I picked up little habits from them but I had a hard time learning from them so I did very minimal you know at home with my mom and in high school there was a sewing class and I did not want to take typing so I chose sewing and when I started it, it was very overwhelming because it was nothing about just getting to the sewing machine. We had to learn all of the different fabrics and all of the different stitches and all the boring stuff before I could get in there and, you know, make something. So let's talk about the kind of sewing machine that you use. I really, I'm kind of a old fashioned person that believes that you don't need to have the fanciest machine. I have kind of the Honda Civic of sewing machines. I have a Singer One, which has too many stitches than what I use. And I have my favorite, which is a Singer Brilliance. I think that it was on a Costco, you know, special. sale, <laughs> special, and I love it. You get so many miles out of certain sewing machines and it's easy. I love, I love to use it. So tell us a little bit about how you chose your Singer Brilliance. Well, I think it chose me. <laughs> I had um, an old brother machine that I probably used for a good five years non-stop. The sewing machine that found me was very reasonable. I wish I could get another one and just have, you know, three of them set up, you know, black thread, white thread, and, you know, something I can change because I just love this particular machine so much. So what, in your opinion, is a good sewing machine for, say, someone starting out, a beginner? I would go to Walmart and I would get something that is maybe not the least expensive but definitely not the most expensive i would probably go with the second you know least expensive and i would bring that home i would go on youtube where i would pull out the manual and just wind the bobbin and keep threading the machine and get comfortable because if you can feel comfortable with your sewing machine then sewing isn't going to feel so overwhelming and you know intimidating. I honestly think simple is better. And you know what? She's right. YouTube has a ton of tutorials, from beginner all the way up to professional, you know, tutorials. And I, there's something for everybody on YouTube, honestly. So it's pretty interesting how I found Jeanette. I put it out on my Facebook page that I was doing a sewing machine segment, and I was recommended to her by our lovely friend Gabby. Thank you, Gabby. Yay, Gabby. <laughs> and with that. I learned about Jeanette's Facebook page called Aprons for Autism. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, Aprons for Autism is my third baby. I have a 15-year-old son who is on the autism spectrum disorder. We have encountered throughout the years many therapies that are not covered by state funding or insurance and we have one particular therapy that is very pricey but I would do anything I had to to provide it because it's shown him so much in return it helps to give him a better quality of life so instead of taking family money that's meant for groceries and utilities and everything I just kind of dug deep and I have a, a good friend who was uh, my son's 
um, special ed preschool teacher who kind of pushed me off the cliff to do aprons for autism. Her name is Dr. Julie Ton. Now I'm fully engulfed in making aprons and promoting my page and, and autism. And this has been a way that I have been able to pay for his therapy, pay for extracurricular things for him. It's hard to work outside of the home when you have a child with special needs, especially autism. Aprons for Autism has about 1,400 followers or likes, and there's people from all over the world that have gotten aprons from me. Tell us, how do you raise awareness for autism with your sewing? Well, I when I started putting myself out there with the Aprons for Autism, I was doing a lot of vendor events and you know, maybe local, you know, street fairs or, you know, any opportunity to get out there and maybe, you know, hopefully supplement some of the income for his therapy. And I would meet a lot of people. I have, you know, a banner that says aprons for autism and people would usually stop because my aprons are so cute. I would talk to a lot of people that maybe didn't understand what autism was or maybe had a nephew or a niece or somebody who may just not know enough about it and one thing that was pretty amazing in the whole process is connecting with other families and other parents that may not know all that there is out there for autism here's a great question okay what is your favorite thing to sew you know i like to have a vision in my head for a new apron that i've never done before and get some poster board or just blank paper and draw out a, pow a pattern and create something. My favorite thing that I've ever done was I created a Wonder Woman apron. <gasps> what? Just, you know, kind of simple, but you know, stars on the bottom, red on top, gold, you know, it just, you knew it was Wonder Woman, but it was my design and I loved it. How has sewing impacted your life? You know, having a child with autism can be very stressful and having to deal with you know therapies and then having a child being able to give him what he needs being able to give my other son with autism what he needs being able to run a household and you know support my husband the sewing has given me a creative outlet and it almost feels very therapeutic sometimes it feels hectic and I have a lot of ideas in my head but most of the time it brings me calming and peace one thing about my aprons as opposed to maybe other ladies that create aprons is I don't believe that we're one size fits all for aprons so I created this beautiful apron it's one of my favorites and I kept it when I made it it's um, full figured it covers up it's lined fully lined and it covers everything up and it's also very flattering for my shape now, did you have a pattern for this one, or are you just um, something that you You use? know what? Sometimes I do use patterns based just on sizing, but a lot of the times I may take um, some parts of a pattern and just embellish it how I feel it needs to look. So this one is one of my favorites. It's got a lot of my favorite colors, and I really love, you know, the, the line right here that kind of, you know, helps the bust and helps kind of thin everything out. So if this one is yours, you use this? I do use this one. Very nice. I love <laughs> it, I love it, I love it. What else do you got? I do make um, some mommy and me aprons. Oh. So I have this, you know, this is Cute. one example. This is probably be for, you know, girls, yeah, any girls. size. And then the mama. Cute. The mama. Oh, so, that is so adorable. I get a lot of orders for family mm -hmm. aprons. A lot of my aprons, well most of my aprons are custom for, you know, occasions or for sizes and um, sometimes I get even teacher apron requests, which would be something like this and it's all different. I, I make these, these are kind of, you know, half aprons and, um, you know, there's a pocket for your cell phone, a pocket for, you know, pencils and I started adding zippers on I the side. It. You call this what? A teacher? This would be like a teacher apron. A teacher apron. But How cute. This one's a cute print, you know, for gardening or just kind of running around the house. Look at this. Watch. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. We're always looking for our phone or our keys <laughs> or a pencil and this apron, well, the phones are really our priority yeah. for, for pockets. Very clever. I've been making these neck chillers. Ooh. And they, uh, they're lifesavers when I'm sitting at my son's, my younger son's baseball game. And this one is not inflated, but these look like nothing, but you soak them in water and they have water absorbing crystals in them. And once they are absorbed, they cool down. 
and it helps you to tolerate some of that heat. So it feels kind of like grainy sand on the inside, but when you soak it, they just kind of keep expanding. Ooh, that is so clever. I've never seen anything like this. You call them what? I call them neck chillers. I, other people make similar things, but it's it's not a very well-known item. I like to stick them in the freezer when they're done absorbing the water so I can have like a ring of ice on me during those baseball games. This one is really good. This one is basically a therapeutic, well, the it did have a, a lavender scent to it, but it's just a therapeutic, you know, bag. You Ooh. throw it in the microwave, it's full of rice. So there's nothing really special about this. I can give you my secret away for this. But these things you never really think about until you need it. So sometimes after a long day, you put this in the microwave, put it, you know, on your shoulder, on your knee. You could put them in the fridge or the freezer and get like cool. Ooh, and, and you say this is, has a bright, it's like a bean bag. It's just like a bean bag. Oh, wow. And then you put this in the microwave and then it just heats up. It heats up. How and long it, does and it, it stay heated? You know what, maybe about like 30 minutes. That rice tends okay. to really hold the temperature really well. Wow, this is really like, like she says, very therapeutic. It would be, it would help for like sore muscles for people who work out maybe, or um, you know, anybody that has body aches and pains perhaps. This is really nice, yeah. love it. Well, that's it everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We truly hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed Jeanette and all the wonderful things we learned about her sewing and, and the way in which she came about sewing and some of her products. And I will link down below her information on her Facebook page, Aprons for Autism. Jeanette, thank you so much. Thank you so much, much. Annie. We truly appreciate it. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Hit this little notification bell so anytime we upload a video, you'll be notified. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in my next video. Bye, Bye. thank you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to comment and like below. Just kidding. Did you get that? Okay. Here's a cool question. Wow. <laughs> Here's a cool question. What the heck, Annie?